of the Kiowa, the Comanche, and uh, Cheyenne from here in Oklahoma, where I sit in my home in Lawton, Oklahoma. Um, I'm, I'm a citizen of the Comanche Nation, and I'm half Kiowa. And so I just wanted to uh, explain to them the, the identity in my agency. Um, this is a short video that will tell the story of how we got the gourd dance from the Red Wolves. This is a short story of the Gore Dance from the Kiowa, Comanche, and, and Southern Cheyenne perspective. Um, before the white man was in this area, there were warriors that needed to go out and have vision quests. And these happened to be warriors that uh, were gone and uh, away for a long time. Uh, they were unsuccessful on their way back home. They were able to come upon um, uh, a tree that they they uh, they rested because they were empty-handed and had a new vision, and they were sad. And but then so they fell asleep. There were two of them, and uh, they were awakened to um, howling and, and crying in the air, and also songs, beautiful songs. And so they woke with each other and they asked them about their if they heard the same thing, and they both agreed. And um, they went towards the sounds of those, uh, these beautiful songs. And they went towards a, a small hill and they looked down in a valley and they seen a lot of the, the wolves like this that were dancing. They were dancing on their hinds and they were singing in the air and they had beautiful songs. And after each one of the songs, they gave a, a howling like, woo, 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 woo. And uh, they, they approached the, the two warriors and uh, told them in the in the in the in the tribal language not to be afraid because they they have a message to give to them. And they said, you know, we we know that you're here. We know that uh, you were unaware that uh, we were uh, we were singing. So we had to wake you up with our singing. They said that the message we want to give to you is that we would like for you to use this stance in a way to honor our the veterans within your your nation. Because the, if you honor the veterans, everybody in your community will come around and give you hope, and give you praise. And the way you do that is with this dance. And so we're dancing in this kind of format. We're not circular, we're just up and down. There's no formation. And we have singers, and we're singing these songs. And you heard our songs, but so you, you start out with the songs really soft and then you, you go faster. And right at the end of each song, uh, we have a howling, howling emotion. And from that, you will know and always remember when you receive this this song, this dance. And so that was the message as these uh, warriors went back to the encampment and just repeated that story. And so that um, today that uh, many of the, the nations like the Kyos, Comanche, and Cheyennes, they, they continue that, this dance, and they honor not only the veterans, they honor anybody that has accomplished something 
uh, very significant in their lives. So that's why I go back and, and share this, uh, this this beginning of story and how uh, how things got started with uh, the gourd dance. I want to explain more about the uh, the the colors and how the the dance is uh, evolved over time. The um, the red and blue uh, blanket comes from many of the years of exchange and trade with um, not only just um, intertribal groups, but also um, white traders in Calvary that uh, many of the, uh, the nations in here in Southwest Oklahoma began to, to see as very attractive. And so they traded and uh, one, one favorite was the blue and the, the red. And so when the gourd dance blanket is uh, dawn for the uh, the dance in itself, um, the there tend to be the um, the red and blue was the more the favorite. Today it's just um, embroidered. It's it put on a different tailored look, but basically it's uh, it's half red and half blue. And uh, many times I've been told that uh, the red will be uh, be on the right and covers over sometimes over to the heart. Uh, it could go either way, but uh, basically this is the attire. The uh, bandolero beads uh, are part of the, uh, the regalia, as well as the sash, and the fan, and the gourd, the gourd itself. The gourd, uh, of course, it's, it's modern version because you have these metal pieces, but everything is sort of today, but it's evolved over time. But I did want to explain that um, the initiation for the gourd dance is mostly for the men, that's how it started, the men folk, but the women to have their place in, in support. They dance sometimes on the side, especially if they're being honored. But um, when you sit at the drum, it's uh, the men at the drum and the women come back and, and, and sing uh, right be behind them. And they were called sometimes uh, well, lady singers, women singers, or horse girls. But uh, those are the, uh, the, the, the the players of the gourd dance, and they're all in, in different uh, formats. Some people are left-handed, right-handed, so it really depends upon the individuals themselves. But nowadays, they have uh, various groups, organizations, and clubs that uh, that have um, outfits that uh, are, that are part of their their signal, their, their marketing, and so therefore they they have their identity through. Uh, their their colors, their, their the way that they 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 bead and also embroidering in their in, in languages to identify who they are. So I wanted to explain uh, a little bit about the uh, uh, the the regalia that they have. A little bit uh, I'd like to explain how various uh, gourd dancers get the regalia. It's mostly um, come through family. Uh, many families have their uh, own beadwork patterns in which they, they, they establish over the years. Um, most of the gourd dancers' um, outfits are made for them by family. And they are put together um, in, in concert. Many of them are gifted and surprised that they get those. But they come um, not only down to the, the line of family and, and inherit it, or they're, they're made from uh, commission uh, orders. From different relatives, but the fan uh, um, could be short, long. Uh, eagle is usually the preferred one. The gourd comes uh, as a shake and on a stick and in a fringe. Um, we have also the 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 the, the opportunity to um, uh, gift of those that are newcomers into the arena by giving the entire outfit. So a little bit about the protocol. The protocol is you usually come uh, to the arena with much respect um, because you're coming as a family, you're coming as a group of people that are going to be honoring those that are dancing, which is all, all intergeneration. Uh, then your, your protocol is because the gourd dance is a circular format in the arena, the southern drum usually is a, a circular in the middle of the arena where all the dancers are on the side, usually sitting on benches. Um, and uh, that's where the, they sit in the reserve space. And usually they put a blanket and they lay it down 
or sit so they could sit could sit together so it's like saving seats and then from there the, the dance starts and the first song is usually the starting song where nobody really uh, don't be starts to dance until later on and you whether it's a hit dancer they will initiate the first um, uh, the first time they would motion to dance and they all get up together and dance um, there was a um, a various pattern of, of dancing and the swing motion and all coordinated by the rhythm of the drum and the drum starts out easy with probably two two um, slow beat slow rhythms two 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 times through and then uh, coming you know, on a very larger beat with a shift the way the dances are um, then um, if somebody's being honored into the arena usually they the family would be um, designated with somebody to call them or they put money in the front of the dancer whether it be a male or female and then family members would uh, come and rally support and it's usually the master ceremony that would, would call and announce that someone's been honored could be one to two people at the same time the same song that they're doing that and then when they come to honor them the the protocols used to give them some money you know throw some uh, dollar bills down in, in front of them to express their uh, their gratitude and opportunity to to dance with them and then once they do that they'll step aside and and then get in line with all the dancers and after that the dance is over the the arena director usually is the one that picks up the money or a certain family member pick up the money it give, give it to the uh, the one that's being honored and that that money whatever it might be uh, they could do what they want to do give it to the person that um, you know, first initiate that or give it to somebody that's a, a guest or they you know usually give it to the drum and let the, all the drummers split up the money and so after that's over, they go on to the next song. The role of the women is really important. I explained it to them where their role was and when they're singing. But when they're gourd dancing, the women usually is on the outer perimeter of the arena. Um, there is um, protocol for that, that women usually um, stand side by side, facing front in into the arena. And um, they're, they're in their... Um, the in a traditional regalia uh, or they they just have a shawl but mostly all the women uh, have a shawl either e either way and uh, that's the, that's the protocol and uh, especially when you bring in the little ones even those children women uh, little girls young girls have have shawls and they, they stand aside uh, usually their their mothers or grandmothers and um, and they also are the ones that are being uh, honored. They, they, when they honor them, they, they, they stand uh, with the, the ones that are being honored. And, and after it's over, um, they usually give a, a, a yell out. Uh, in, in Oklahoma, we call it a lulu, which is um, a way to express woman's uh, appreciation for that, uh, that, that gesture. And, and rather than say, thank you very much, or, you know, they just have a, 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 a protocol that uh, is nonverbal. They just they sing a kind of a glutal uh, lulu uh, from their their expression of love. The gourd dance is really uh, not only just for veterans, but it is for many others today because of um, evolving contemporary society that want to be honored. So it's an honoring dance uh, today, and which includes so many people and gender. Uh, as well and it usually uh, comes about with announcements of flyer and people uh, today to have social networking and get the word out um, and then you, you put together a head staff or you just come as a family and just say you know this is what I'd like for you to do but usually there's lead roles they call it the head staff with the master of a ceremony the MC would uh, coordinate everything by introducing with the purpose of the dance um, who are the the principal people that are part of the hit staff be the hit singer host drum or lead dancers uh, arena director security and uh, who's sponsoring the event that's usually the, the the information from the MC the lead dancer is usually uh, somebody that uh, that accomplished that uh, does dancing all the time but has a good following as well and that person uh, will uh, 
call upon their family and their support to come over to uh, to be uh, with them as they dance. And so even there's hip, hip man dancer, hip woman dancer today, um, in many of the local powwows and uh, gourd dance. The gourd dance is uh, also uh, an, an indoor and outdoor venue. So depending upon the weather, it's really important to, to understand that uh, it, it's ongoing throughout the year. The healing aspect of the, uh, the gourd dance is really important to me. That's because you try to share in fellowship the, the, the honoring uh, celebration for many individuals and their families. And it's evolved like many of the, many of the dances and ceremonies uh, uh, over time because our families expand. They come and go and, and, they, and they often um, introduce family through, the, through this dance. And so here we are in Southwest Oklahoma, but I, I've danced and sang in, in gourd dances in uh, the Pacific Northwest and in, in, in California, West Coast, Arizona, New Mexico, Kansas, you know, um, and even in Minnesota and in, in, in West, East. So it's, it's really, a, it's become almost an intertribal in many ways because we introduce relatives and then we take on relatives to many of the, the gourd dances that we have. For example, I have many relatives that uh, are Diné, the Navajo, that uh, were introduced into this way. And so, to, you know, as a singer and dancer, I've been able to come close to those that are dedicated and honoring the original story of the gourd dance, but they take their version of their culture and then they, they move that, but they always try to honor uh, the original content and how it was uh, put, put together. And so today there's, there's dances all over the country, uh, particularly with um, the Navajo, uh, some of the Pueblo, the, the, the West Coast. I've been in, in Seattle uh, these last few years and introduced the, the gourd dance to many of the Pacific Northwest coastal tribes in, in California and also in the East. So it's, it's become almost intertribal, but um, the, the story of the, its original basis here in Southwest Oklahoma. I'd like to take a brief opportunity to uh, give a shout out to my daughter, Chantel uh, Lee Pivioti. Um, Chantel is um, um, currently living in Portland, Oregon, but um, she has her family and she has got a beautiful way of life and beautiful family. And um, we, we, we all come home to do our dances like we, we always have done. But um, the opportunity to be brought into the Gore dance like Chantel was at a very young age by her grandmother, uh, Mary Lee Peewee, who was Kiowa, and so she brought her as a, a, a young, a young, a young girl, and danced side by side and listened to these songs all the time, not because I sing them, but you know, they're surrounded by the music in itself. So now, as we begin to think about how our our relatives they grow up, they grow up on the drum, doing the dance, and they become head staff, and we we honored to. Uh, a few years ago that she was the head uh, gore dancer in the, the uh, Sparks um, Indian uh, colony in, uh, in near Reno, uh, Nevada uh, for their annual gore dance. And so uh, we have a family that's very active and when our time is available to, and to come together and um, honor one, one another. So I just want to give a shout out to Chantel as, as my beautiful daughter. 